focus, honestly, is is winning every game, giving ourselves the best chance to to move up. And uh, so I'm much more focused on uh, the seeding rather than the opponent. So if we can sneak into eighth, then uh, yeah, I, I really don't care who we play. It's just a simple math equation, you know, get, get, get two bites of the apple instead of the one. Hey, Dub Nation, it's Steve Kerr. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Well, thank you, Coach. Uh, yes, you are. Glad you're all with us. 888-957-9570. Who are you rooting for tonight, Kings or Pelicans? I am rooting for the Pelicans. I think I am, too. I don't think that the Pelicans are going to lose all three. Well, I think that the Lakers are going to go Wisnowski on that game on Sunday. I don't think they're going to fly AD or LeBron to that game. I think the Lakers <sighs> will be resigned to the 10 at that point, so they're going to rest their guys. I think that uh, the Pelicans beat the Kings. And then the Warriors run the table. The Kings just need to lose one more, and they have Phoenix. Phoenix will be playing for something. I think it's more likely that you can pass sack mm. and be the eight. I think you're right, but I also I don't know about this. The Lakers are going to punt Sunday thing. The Lakers are in Memphis um, over the weekend. Their second to last game is in Memphis. Okay, that's a win. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. So. If we're working on the theory that the Kings could lose tonight, then I don't know who's got the tiebreaker between the Lakers and the Kings. I'd have to look that up. But the Lakers will absolutely, especially with the Kings still having the Suns on their schedule, the Lakers will have something to play for on Sunday. Like, that absolutely could affect seeding. At minimum, it could affect whether they're home or road for the 9-10 game. So, any, but I get your point. And I think I'm with you that I'm rooting for the Pelicans tonight. Even though when you say I don't think the Pelicans will lose all three, Pelicans in Sacramento tomorrow, they're uh, tonight, they're here tomorrow. Right. And then their last game is, aforementioned, the Lakers on Sunday. And so they're losable. Those games are all very, very losable. And, uh, and if the Warriors win out and the Pelicans lose out, the Warriors pass them. So if the Warriors win out, I like again. Either the Kings or Pelicans will lose tonight, and if the Warriors win out, that obviously presupposes that they're going to beat the Pelicans tomorrow. Yes. So, in other words, you only need one more loss from either of those. Whichever one loses tonight, you only need one more loss to pass them and get into the seven eight game. Well, the Pelicans would need to lose all three, right? But again, if they whoever loses tonight, right? If it's the Pelicans, right? You're, if the Warriors win out, that means the Pelicans lose again tomorrow because they're here. Right. Right. But and, then if they beat the Lakers, you still trail the Pelicans. Right. And same with the Kings if they beat the Suns. My point is, is whoever loses tonight, you're 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 really just saying you need to lose one more, and you both have a good team that you need to beat. So if if the Kings lose tonight right. and they lose to the Suns, Warriors can pass them. If the Pelicans lose tonight and the Pelicans lose Sunday against the Lakers, the Warriors can pass them. Right. So, the Warriors hold the tiebreaker over the Pelicans. Correct. They don't hold the tiebreaker over the Kings. Correct. So that's why you need three, but you have a game in hand against the Pelicans tomorrow night. Right. Whoever loses tonight simply needs to lose one more non-Warrior game right. for the Warriors to pass them. And I think it's more likely that the Kings lose to Phoenix than the Pelicans lose to L.A. Because if you get to that spot and the Warriors have won two games, and then the Lakers have won one game. If the Warriors and Lakers are both at 46 and 35 with one game to go, then the Warriors have Utah in the final game. I think the Lakers would look at that and perhaps decide to rest their guys, not even fly their guys to New Orleans, knowing that the Warriors are going to beat Utah. So why exert to try to knock off you know, the because, Pelicans in be, that spot? Because, because they could pass the Kings. Or potentially the Pelicans. The Pelicans could very easily go zero and two in the next thirty hours, like that. That 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 is beyond plausible. So again, I'm with you. I yep. think it's more likely that they catch the Kings. So I'll root for the Pelicans tonight. But should the Kings win, the Warriors still have a path to the eight, which just means beat the Pelicans tomorrow night, right? And then and hope then, the Lakers and then be beat Laker them. fans on Sunday. Yeah, which is always tough to which do. Which stinks. But yeah, and it's. <laughs> The only thing, well, the Warriors could end up as the ten if they Absolutely. had a hiccup, you know, if they, if they lose one, yeah, if they don't win out, and the Lakers with two games left to go, 
you would figure that uh, who do the Lakers have before the New Orleans game? Memphis. They've got Memphis. So yeah. you figure it's a win, and then you know likely a, a tough game I, at New Orleans, depending on how that goes. I think it's likely that the Lakers um, are, are are going to have something to play for Sunday. I really do. Um, the fly in the ointment is the war is tomorrow night. And, and and so I, we go back to what we were saying earlier. Yeah, I definitely think the Warriors are just resting Clay and Draymond. Right. Because tomorrow night is massive, and tomorrow night is losable. Yeah, and, for sure. And Phoenix, for their part, they're at Sacramento and at Minnesota, so Phoenix could fall into a thirty-five loss situation rather easily with you know two fairly difficult games at Sac and then Sunday at Minnesota. Minnesota will be playing for a seed, either the number one or the number two, trying to avoid the three. So a lot of these games, that's why I'm really, really in this year, Mark. On, and I know I've been a big critic of the play-in tournament, but the fact that all these games on Sunday are happening at the exact same time is a great move by the NBA, yep. borrowing from international soccer, which has been done for decades. And now the NBA emulating what, you know, the NFL has started to do and Major League Baseball have those last games all concurrent. One big wild jamboree. And what are the game slots on Sunday? What time is everything? It was twelve thirty Pacific. Was uh, the East Coast. The well, Eastern yeah, Conference games are at ten. There's two sets, exactly. Gotcha. At uh, ten AM our time. Yeah. Yep. Correct. And then, then twelve thirty are all the Western Conference. So games. you got seven at ten and then you've got eight at twelve thirty. Okay. Two and, full racks. And then uh, go ahead and racks those guys. Totally. And then uh, as soon as the Warriors game is over, somewhere in that neighborhood of 3, 315. Grandy, are you doing Sunday? Correct. You got post game? Mm -hmm. And then you know he's going to hand it off to when he's done, right? That's yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be ready. My guy, uh, Kyle Rudolph. No. <laughs> he's taking a powder. <laughs> Who are you with these days? Ephraim. E You're back Ephraim. with Ephraim. Yeah. Okay, good. Ephraim, who's a huge Laker fan. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. I'm so a big Ephraim fan, but... Every time you mention that, I know a little it's part tough. of my Ephraim fandom dies. No doubt, no doubt. It is fun to talk Dodgers with him though, because he'll say he's a Dodger fan, but he don't know what the hell's going on in baseball. Right. I'm trying hard to get him to Otani this whole thing up, and he's just like, "Yeah, yeah, it's crazy." And that's all he'll have to say. Like, yeah. so he he's that like he is all in on Lakers. He's one of those football players who I think likes basketball better than football, but football paid the bills. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, he's all in on Lakers. So, 5 o'clock or so, whenever Grandy's yeah. done, uh, you'll Grandy, get... Grandy, go ahead and talk block him to about yeah, 6. Yeah, go as long this as you big. want. I'll yeah. go to like 8 o'clock. We'll, well see. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. You won't. But anyway... <laughs> uh, Keep Mark out of the market. Whenever you're done, you will get a, uh, a Warrior fan and a Laker fan yelling at each other right here on 95.7 The Game. And I wonder if you ask this question, and I'm sure you will ask Ephraim on Sunday, the question you're asking our fans, which is... Are you more invested emotionally in this play-in and the rest of this year or the questions that are coming in the offseason? Because well, I wonder, as a Laker fan, where his mind is. And, you know, Warrior fans, where are you? Are you fully invested in these last three games plus play-in plus possible playoff? Or are you more intrigued by the questions that are out there in June and July and beyond. Well, I, I there, there's something in there, what you just asked. There's something in there that I feel is sort of a tell. It's showing that some people, because all fans are different, but some people don't believe the words that are coming out of their own mouth. That's what I think. Because I hear it from a lot of you. They can go on a run. So, but, 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 but would you trade Kaminga in the offseason? It's like, well, then you don't believe they can go on a run. If you believe they can go on a run, and I'm not going to call you stupid if you do, and I'm not going to call you, uh, you know, a wet blanket if you think that the people who think they can go on a run are, are just unrealistic. I get it. I get the whole picture. They're the Warriors. They've got the DNA. They've got the people. They are getting older. It sounds absurd to be talking about a title when you're the 10 seed, but as I said and borrowed from Scott Osler, belief is free. What the hell? Like, let's just do this. This isn't where they wanted to be. It's not where we wanted them to be, but it's where they are. So let's do this because they're not out of it. And whether it ends up in a title run or not, I'm also someone who values each round and will take that for 
whatever it is. But I do think there's a handful at least of the, you know, a percentage of the base that's like, they can do it. Come on, you don't want to face the Warriors. They can go on a run. Do you think Clay is gone? Right, it's right. like, wait a minute. Because what if they did go on a run? Well, then the whole offseason conversation was for not. Right. It was a pointless exercise. How many postseason wins does it take for Good all question. of this to become, you know, a moot thing? Because if they make it out of the play in but get bounced in five, well, you you're probably thinking about blowing it up. But if they make it out of the play in okay. and they they shuck Minnesota <laughs> or OKC and then you tangle with Denver and you go seven gutsy games and the Joker hits another forty seven foot stanky leg throw and you lose in seven in Denver. But darn it, you put a scare into the defending champs. That, the, even the phrase that, run it, but then it, that maybe might, you were in run it back. Yeah, no, maybe the, yeah, like that will definitely gather some. Some just make the playoffs. But right, are, like if you really want to just eliminate every off season conversation that we've had so far, are you counting play in victories? No, or just playoff wins? Playoff wins six. I think it might be six. Yeah, six. Yes. I think it might be more than six. That but means you're getting late into the conference semifinals. Last year you went six. You got six playoff six. wins. Yep. And they did ostensibly run, run it, it back. back. But you got rid of Jordan Poole and you brought in. Yeah, but you brought in was, a temporary 39 year old Chris Paul. That had nothing to do with with running it back or doing something. Right. You new. kept the core together yes. and you shuffled a 30 million dollar out for a 30 million dollar in ballparking salaries there. Six. Yeah, I think it's more than that, but really, that, yeah. And I, I think if you're Joe Lacob, it would be a little bit of the insanity uh, approach if you just ran it back. But, but then, and I don't want to get into off season talk because I'm locked in on no, game eighty. No, but this is this. This is now. Like because right. what? Remember now, not all six games in the playoffs are created equal. It was one thing to beat the Kings last year, gather those four wins, and then get two against the Lakers. Remember, if this team is to get six playoff wins, that means they eliminated a big boy. Right. Possibly the Nuggets. Well, last year you eliminated the three seed, yeah, which is a big boy. Not uh, Come on. The adorable little big fella. Adorable little <laughs> cha-cha-cha. Totally. Coochie-coochie-coo. You snuffed the beam. Yeah. They Took remember, the bull right out of that just thing. patted them right on the head and said, that was fun. Yeah. Thank you for coming. We'll see you at camp again next week. Totally. That's not going to happen this year. This year, you win four games. You took out Denver, or you took out Minnesota. And or then, OKC. And then you, right. And then you went, well, let's be real. Actually, um, yes, the Warriors could still end up being the seven. It's unlikely. Denver's going to be the one. That's a wrap. Looks like Last it. Last night, did it. And by the way, I don't know if you watched. Did you watch? Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> no one's beating that game. <laughs> Good. No one's no one's beating that team in the uh in Denver. They're like thirty three and eight at home. Dude. Eight home losses. They're not Boston, thirty five and three. Yeah. Regular season's different. It is. You and, just watch yeah. them get to the fourth quarter of a very tight game and then just go, Okay, that's enough. Flick. Yep. I mean, just absolutely boat race Minnesota in the fourth quarter. Um, let's talk it out. Tim on 680. Hi, Tim. You're on Will uh, with uh, Willard and Dibs. Hello, Tim. Hello. Well, it's a good call, Tim. Rack him. All right. Thanks, Tim. Rack him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man. Call back, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I it, say that, yeah. and, and, and that goes back to the point I'm trying to make if the, uh, if, the, if the Warriors get six. If the Warriors get six... They took out a big boy, and then they went late with another big boy. Like, yeah. You probably went late with either Dallas or the Clippers. Well, the way it looks now, if you wind up in that 10-9 play-in game, and you find a way to win that, and then you beat the 7-8 loser, and you get the 8 seed, you're getting Denver. You're getting Denver. Denver's got San Antonio and Memphis left in the schedule, Denver, both on the road. And now Denver has a tiebreaker over Minnesota. And Den they have a one-game lead. Yeah. They're, so and they're not the losing one. to San Antonio or Memphis. Denver's the one. So I think it's even more important, now that we're looking at it in this way, in this lens, you got to get to that 8. Because you get to the 8, as Steve Kerr said in that soundbite we played on the way back in, you do get two bites at the apple. Right. But more importantly, you get a chance to avoid Denver. A chance to be by the winning seven. that eight seven. Correct. You get the seven, 
and you would get three days off because the seven eight game is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So you win the seven eight game, you're the seven. You would play Saturday, and you'd have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off to get ready to travel to Minnesota or OKC, a much more desirable first round opponent. By the way, Minnesota and OKC. I'd like to know who is likely to be the two. They have the exact same record, and I think Minnesota's got the tiebreaker. Minnesota's got the Hawks and the Suns. The Hawks both and the at Suns. Home. Oklahoma City, in turn, um, Oklahoma City with these last two games is going to have Milwaukee and Dallas. Yeah. Both at home. I'm going to guess Milwaukee that, playing for, well, they might be playing for the two. No Giannis, but, but no Giannis. And, and they're not playing that well anyway. And Dallas, very likely to not need Sunday's game. Right, but, unless they have a chance to get the four, which would be home home court against the Clippers. They're a game back of the clip. That, that, that is the 4-5 series, but you're right. It is not decided who's at home. Right, where's game seven going to yeah. be? But uh, both those teams getting playoff ready. Giannis probably won't play. I, I think he already is out, no, for, the out yeah. for the regular season. he's ruled out for the rest of the regular season. And yes. Milwaukee's going to be the two. Uh, barring a big collapse, they got a game up in the loss column on the Knicks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think it's going to be Minnesota, and that's who you wanted, right? That's who I wanted. That's who you wanted, but you got to get to the eight, seven eight play in right. to get there. And they, which, so they need help. Yeah, they which help. means I, I think it goes back to New Orleans. I think you need New Orleans to beat Sac tonight, and that would help. Yeah. The problem is, is you're also going to need Phoenix to beat Sacramento. And um, I don't know if you've watched the Phoenix Suns play. They're not very good right now. They're good, and then they're awful all over the course of 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, well, right. They have spurts. They had one last night in order to beat spurts. the Clippers late. But, I mean, they beat a Clippers team that did not play any of the, you know, Clippers. Right. They didn't have any of their players. What did Bones Highland end up with last night in that game? Uh, Bones Highland went for 37 Bones. Bones Highland. Wow. Scored 37, and uh, <laughs> Brandon Boston went for 25. And that game was tight until there was like three, three yeah. minutes left to go. And then the, the, the Suns went on a little run and, and ended up winning the game. Um, but if you saw that and you're like, oh, yeah, Suns won by 16, that thing was tight. That thing was tight the whole way. So I have no faith in the Suns. Yep. Um, I almost have more faith in the Lakers in New Orleans if they try on Sunday than I do Phoenix in Sacramento. But, look, that's where the Warriors are at. They need help, yeah. and it's not out of the question. Well, and the Suns are still playing for something, especially sure. if New Orleans loses, then they're in a flat-footed tie. Phoenix still has designs on being the six. So Phoenix is going to give it their, no their best effort. And, you know, you look at Phoenix on paper, Mark, Phoenix is probably the second best team in the West, but unfortunately, this game's not played on paper. On paper has to be one of the funniest sports phrases that we of use. Of course, you know, on paper. Uh, I mean, well, on, on paper, Phoenix is a sixty-win team again. On paper, the Warriors aren't the ten, right? But on paper, the Warriors are probably the five. Yep, somewhere in there, but they're not. No, on paper, the Clippers are probably the two. Minnesota and OKC on paper would be where the Lakers and Warriors are. Totally. But totally. it's not the way it goes. Yeah, man. I, it's going to be Leah, fun over the next four days. Gonna, That's kind of where I am. Yeah, right. It's yeah. going to be really, really fun. And I don't want to think about if any of the big three are leaving. And I don't want to think, God, I don't want to think about the salary cap. I don't want to think about the luxury tax. Yep. I don't want to think about declining Chris Paul's option. I don't want to think about is Jonathan Kaminga available through trade. I don't want to think about does anybody want Wiggins. Like, I get it. There is a better than 50-50 shot that that's where we're headed sometime soon. But I don't know, man. This story now has, has my attention. And, um, you know, we've talked about it a bunch. It's not always easy to do, but to try to keep the offseason out of our, our conversations as much as possible. Steve Kerr did the same, you know, when we asked him yesterday um, how much of the offseason has to do with the way these next week, couple weeks go. 
And he's just like, I mean, we're, you know, we're not even thinking about it. And Clay Thompson, oh, I'm not even thinking about free agency. And his dad, yeah, we're not even thinking about it. And I'm sure they are thinking about it the same way we're thinking about the offseason. But I, I, I'd love to go through the exercise of pushing that off as far as possible because whether whether you're happy or not that the Warriors are in this position, they are. And, and it's going to be, I think, really, really compelling the way this whole thing plays out, and I feel about as good as ever that they've got a real legit chance to come out of this stupid thing, this cockamamie play-in tournament, as you call it. Yeah, especially if they can get to the eight, which doesn't seem so far-fetched anymore. If the Warriors can handle their own business and get not a lot of help, they just need a little bit of help. And it starts tonight, I think, with New Orleans beating Sacramento, and then you get the Kings to suffer one more defeat, and bada-boom, bada-bing, you are the eight, and I think if they are the eight, that gives them a great chance and a great motivation to get to the seven, and then you take on the two, and all of a sudden you might be looking at a little bit of a runny well, run. I mean, look, what we're looking at right now is tomorrow night. I, again, I know that sounds like we're looking ahead, and that's because we are. Right. Like, you lose tonight, whatever. You don't deserve anything. But provided that the Warriors are able to win in Portland, tomorrow night, I view as a playoff game. Tomorrow night with New Orleans in town as a playoff game. Yeah. Um, 